This is the Radio of Horror show, and tonight on Radio of Horror, we will be talking about the end of Fangoria Magazine, one of the longest-running horror publications and one of the biggest staples in the horror community, unfortunately ended today. Uh, Fangoria Magazine was started, I believe, 38 years ago, uh, and it had a... Uh, started in 1979 and went till 2017. And Fangoria Magazine was possibly one of the reasons why I got so invested in the horror genre. Um, Jess, my co-host Jess O'Lantern, what was your first exposure to Fangoria Magazine? Um, I constantly saw Fangoria at bookstores and comic stores when I was a kid, and I always wanted copies, but I was never allowed to have them. <laughs> So it was kind of like one of those uh, hidden curiosities and kind of sparked an interest in, in horror because of the, the covers and because of the, the content. And when I got older, I was able to access them more through the internet. And I've actually, unfortunately, never even purchased a print copy. And that may be one of the main reasons why this is happening, unfortunately. And, and I really regret not giving more to the industry because more and more print horror magazines like this are going print magazines in general are going um and you know i i I can only hope that at least the online presence of fangoria lasts because they have been such an influential presence in the horror community and you know i remember now um more more recently rather uh when I moved to New York City, just being very excited and knowing that their offices were so close and wanting to somehow get involved. And it's it's a tragedy in the horror community today. Are you saying you were that close? You didn't, like, stop by to see if they did, like, like tours or something? That would have been awesome. I know, right? <laughs> um, all of the best offices were in New York. DC Comics was in New York. Marvel Comics was in New York. Fangoria Magazine was in New York. Paper Cuts. Paper cuts? I, I don't know what. The, wait, what is paper cuts? <laughs> <laughs> the um the the, the 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 distribution company that's doing the uh, new tales from the crypt. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, good, good. Oh, well, see if you can stop by there, like bust in there and be like Jessel Lynch with Radio Horror. I want the hard news. Let's do an interview. <laughs> Something like that. Be like Lois Lane, just bust in on those offices or whatever and get the facts, the true truth, the the hard the hard story behind their new tales from the crypt comic book series. But we digress. <laughs> um, I always remember Fangoria being, as you also said, one of those magazines my parents would never in a billion trillion years ever let me buy, especially because the early covers of Fangoria magazine, and I don't know the reason why, and I do have a contact that used to work for Fangoria, and he left years ago um, due to some of the reasons why the comp- the magazine folded um, today. Um, they used to put like some of the most gore fantastic, horribly bloody, gory images on the cover. Um, And over time, they kind of milled out. It was like a lot of like the movie poster, you know, that of the film coming out, like The Craft or Dark Shadows or, um, you know, whatever. Um, But for a while there, it was like somebody like with the blood pouring out of their mouth or was like Freddy killing somebody or was, you know, like Syl from the movie Species or the Xenomorph, which in on itself is pretty frightening. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking now about all the the covers the, that are backlogged at um, some of the comic book stores that I've been to in the city, and I, I'm just imagining I, I can hear like dollar signs in my head of how upscaling the price is going to be on those copies now because the, their value just skyrocketed. Oh yeah, absolutely. I I, I have um, there's probably like two or three issues of Fangoria I have always kept, um, and it was. Um, as cliche as this is, it's because of the articles. Because the articles were really well, really well written. Sometimes on these uh, uh, in-depth look at the first time this these you know this movie came out. And one of them was like an issue of like the when the Monster Squad came out, the old 1980s movie about the kids who fight Dracula, oh, Wolfman. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> really, really good movie. I loved finding that issue of Fangoria. And I also have, uh, sorry, I have two others. I have when um, Jason Goes to Hell came out because I remember that was a movie. I begged and 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 begged my mom to take me to go see. And she never would. However, a year later at summer camp, they showed it to a bunch of 13 and 14 year olds. 
And let me tell you, this is not a movie to show 13 and 14 year olds. You have like Jason being, you have a, the opening sequence is an FBI agent taking her clothes off and getting in the shower to, you know, draw Jason out somehow. <laughs> You have later on a guy giving another man a shave and a haircut in the most BDSM homoerotic looking way possible. You have a guy having his like the the, the Jason demon coming out of Jason's body. Um, a woman riding her boyfriend getting split in half by a tent spike. I mean, this is like the most bloody tastic movie. And these, by the way, some of the non nude scenes from what I just described, you could find in Fangoria magazine. <laughs> Because if they were anything, but they were tasteful, they didn't show nudity, but man, they would show the gore. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the essence of horror. <laughs> right? I mean, God, look at, uh, what, what is that TV series, uh, American Horror Story? Do you ever watch that? Yeah, I've seen a couple of the seasons that they've had in the past. I haven't watched the most recent season, though. Okay, did you see the Lady Gaga Hotel one? Yes. Okay, a lot of people, a lot of people, and I mean like bloodydisgusting.com, dreadcentral.com, Radio of Horror, just to name a few, were extremely upset that they could show this giant bloody orgy scene with Lady Gaga, but somehow nipples are offensive. (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean blood orgy. (laughs) It it, it won in the vote. It's like, yeah, nipples are blood orgy. Basically, um, the well, ma- I mean, but yeah, that night, American Horror Story gets away with a lot. They push they push the envelope on censorship a lot for for things that they can get away with. Um, but you know, I, I'm I'm a fan of the show. I know they get a lot of flack for some things, but I've I've always been a fan of them. And these were like the type of things, um, if you hadn't seen the episode, you'd have to wait till the issue of Fangoria came out. And I, as much as I, I we both obviously use the internet, and we're doing this conversation over Skype um, for, and we, this will be posted on YouTube and Vidme, which is all technology-based websites. Um, I, I, I really miss not sometimes having uh, 24-hour news available to me. You know what I mean? Waiting for that newest issue of Fangoria to come out. I buy Horror Hound every other month. It's my favorite magazine by far. It's the magazine I look forward to every other month. Um, And I I honestly, in my opinion, I think Horror Hound became what Fangoria used to be in a lot of ways. But Horror Hound also writes that has a completely different type of different type of like article setting they're a little less on the interviews and a lot more on like um retrospectives on like films and products and and things of that nature you know what i mean jess yeah well i mean horror hound also has a record has a record label um that i i know some of the artists on there i played shows with some of the artists that are on that label and i i love horror hound for the focus that they put on all aspects of horror it's not just solely about movies where Fangoria mostly focused on film and media and TV and less about the genre of, of you know, horror rock and horror music. Correct. Um, so I, I feel like it's kind of an evolution. It's definitely a step in the right direction. Horror Hound has it right. Mm-hmm. I love that magazine. And I really, I, I really hope that it's not kind of a going away of the buffalo kind of situation where they're next. You and, know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I feel like Horror Hound is thriving right now. And this is taken directly from Ken Haley, Hanley's uh, Twitter. Uh, this is how we the news broke because um, he had posted about this right from Twitter, um, announcing, um, been waiting a long time to say it, but I can finally say I'm no longer involved with Fangoria. I've been on hiatus from the company in mid-December. I, I've always been grateful for the time and opportunity there, so it's a effing bummer. For those wondering, there will be likely not be another issue, especially in print, unless there's new ownership. As for the odds of what ha- of that happening, there's a minuscule chance as something was in the cards, but I'm personally giving up hope. I wish for the best for those remaining at Fango for however long that may be, especially the music team. Yeah, I, I was reading it. I was reading up on it earlier tonight um, when I got the news. It, I just, I also, you know, as a, as a sidebar, I remember researching their website. When I first moved to the city, being like, oh, I wonder if they're hiring. I wonder if there's, <laughs> there's anything, you know, researching as, you know, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed as I am. Dude, you go to the interview as, like, the Jesso Lantern with, like, the makeup on to really impress them that you are one of the people. Sidebar, okay. <laughs> um, 
the fact is that they did have internships, oh. but they weren't paid internships. Oh. And I was confused by that. And I know that there's, you know, dozens of unpaid internships in the city, and that makes sense. Um, but I mean, like, it, it, I, I, I wondered why a company that had been around for so long hadn't been able to supply, you know, just a stipend or something for, for the work that was described in the internship, like, application. Mm. I, I was I was worried that was like a big red flag for me is what I'm saying like that was kind of like a whoa wait but they're such a well established company like that that got me confused and got me worried yeah the money thing has been like the talking point about um, the negativity towards Fangoria for the last couple of years and this is very all publicly known um, this yeah. has been on the, this has been all over the internet this isn't like hearsay or rumors this this was like a blowout uh, over a year ago um, and uh, I know websites like dreadcentral.com have also been suffering from uh, money issues and they they went yeah. on this huge campaign recently to save dread Central uh, with their patreon to get like subscribers and things of that nature and they're really going in a great direction to uh, keep uh, dread Central going which has been on around for uh, as of last year, 10 years. So this is their 11th year now. Yeah, you know, I'm wondering why Fangoria didn't try crowdsourcing at that point when they start seeing something like that going wrong or even the first few signs of a company like that going under. I, I mean, I know that the concept of, of crowdsourcing and, you know, Kickstarter and GoFundMe and those types of things, it's still very new. It's still very taboo in a lot of ways. You don't want to beg your fans for money, but it's mm. not begging. It's asking. Yeah, it, I mean... It, it, it's a different it's a different thing entirely. I mean, I know... I'm going to get on a tangent here because no, I, I'm... No, it's I'm, okay. I'm re-lead, rereading um, Amanda Palmer's book, The Art of Asking, and she had a Kickstarter that was one of the most well well received kickstarters i suppose you could say she made almost a million out of her kickstarter it, it was very successful mm. um and I, I think she actually made more than that um but regardless she wrote a book about the process and she did a ted talk about the process and it really pains to see that companies like that don't go into different technologies and different aspects of like well this isn't working. This business model isn't working. The art form itself is dying, but there are still fans. There are still people who want to support Fangoria. There are still people who care about its existence. And I'm certain that had they done something like that, then maybe they wouldn't be in this situation. hope that... Um... Something happens one day. Unfortunately, um, it won't. I don't. It will not probably be anytime soon. Um, you know, unless short of a miracle or a, a fan with a lot of capital. Uh, well, no, it's not, it's not even that. It's just a. That's the whole process of crowdsourcing. You know, it's not one fan with a lot of money. It's a lot of fans with a little bit of money. That's you true. Know, if, if all their fans gave five bucks, I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's just there. There's a lot of. Um, uh, there's a lot of behind the scenes leadership mess that I can't talk about that I'm that I became aware of. So I I, I it, it makes sense as well. You know, if there's if there's intern if there's internal things that are going on, that's one thing. But if it's just money, yeah. If it's solely money, then you know, I just really hope that they at least leave the 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 website up, the online publications, the blogs that type of that type of print you know not print rather but mm -hmm. every other aspect of their media so that their existence is still there that there is still some sort of presence and kind of a glimmer of hope for yeah a community because if you just completely get rid of it there's just going to be a, a you know that that's going to be detrimental to the horror community and i feel like there is still a chance i'm going to be an optimist and i'm going to try and stay hopeful that they're going to still stick around the other thing that makes it just a bit sad that uh, it, that this is happening at the time it does is because Rue Morgue magazine just announced that uh their new editor in chief and like a huge like leadership restructuring in a very positive manner but that com that that magazine's also being published up in Canada so i don't know how like magazines are being published in other countries um compared to the united states and how much better they're doing and Rue Morg also has like a podcast a radio show a music line a convention and a lot of other things going for it um like you mentioned horror hound does with their music line and they also have a huge horror convention scene yeah, um horror. so 
I don't see Fangoria doing that, and maybe those are some of the other avenues that Fangoria can get into that Rue Morgue is doing. Because, like I said, Rue Morgue, you know, huge announcement with their new leadership team. Um, you know, they're 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 doing really well, obviously, in sales wise, in order to do that. Uh, so, you know, the best but of luck it, to them. <laughs> what? But also read recently, like just just tonight, that they're also cutting back their print distribution. Though they're cutting from twelve issues to six. That might be the best way to go, considering that's what Horror Hound does. And that's how Horror Hound's been able to ma- maintain their book. Um, there's a comment on the um, uh, the article on bloodydisgusting.com about Fangoria saying that nobody wants to shell out nine ninety nine a magazine. And Horror Hound has been six ninety nine since issue number one back in yeah. 2007. And that's a huge deal to maintain that price tag. Uh, Rumorg is also nine ninety nine, I believe. Um, it is. Yeah. And their their new editor in chief, by the way, is Andrea Sub is Sadi. Again, I'm terrible with last names. Uh, one of my other podcasts, we have a linguist on the podcast. Thank God she is there because she is like rapid fire with like saying the names correctly. <laughs> uh, but I've met this woman before, and she she is uh, she is very very good at what she does. Do you have anything else you want to say about Fangoria, Jess? I really hope that the fans stay optimistic. And that, you know, that the, the comments and the reactions and that the stories that are coming out of, you know, this is how I discovered Fangoria. This was my entrance to the horror realm. This is what got me into horror. That I really hope that, you know, these resonate and that it actually has some sort of effect on, you know, even if it's not going to save, you know, quote unquote, save the print aspect of it, that it will help maintain Fangoria's presence in our community. Definitely. Definitely. Absolutely. Thanks everyone for checking out this video on our little, uh, goodbye to Fangoria magazine. And don't forget to check out the rest of our videos here on the radio of horror YouTube channel and Vidme. Don't forget to like subscribe and comment. And we also have a Patreon page. So if you'd like to help uh, radio horror in any way possible, please visit our Patreon page Thank you very much.